All right, hi everyone. Today I'm gonna be making one of my favorite recipes. It's a banana oat muffin. Um, my name is Lori. I'm a nutrition intern at Community Servings right now. Um, and like I said, this is one of my favorite recipes. It's a banana oat muffin um, and it's got lots of fiber in it. It's not too sweet. It's pretty hearty. Um, and it can really make a balanced meal if you pair it with um, something like yogurt for breakfast or maybe even some eggs. So I'm just gonna mash these bananas here. Um, and you can use a fork for that or any kind of little masher that you might have. And it's nice to use bananas that have um, some browning on them. And you can even use ones that are a bit bruised um, or maybe have been discounted at the store because they've been bumped or something like that. So it can really be a nice um, budget um, recipe as well. So I'm just going to mash these as well as I can. They're not quite as ripe as I would like, but that's all right. Another alternative is to use bananas that have been frozen. If you've got a stockpile going, I'm just going to try and mash these as well as I can here. They're kind of slipping around in the bowl. So this is actually a pretty high fiber recipe because we're using not only bananas, but also oat flour. And um, those two ingredients are both pretty high in fiber. And there's a lot of health benefits associated with fiber that you might have heard about before. One of them is that um, it helps with blood sugar regulation. And so it can kind of help keep blood sugar stable um, when you have fiber with meals. Another benefit um, is just keeping people full and satisfied after meals, um, it has a really filling effect. So that kind of makes these muffins um, a really good thing to add to a breakfast or an afternoon snack. Other benefits asso associated with fiber are also um, that it helps with triglyceride and total cholesterol levels in the blood. And those two things really help with heart health um, and blood vessel health. So really fantastic health benefits there. Another benefit you might have heard about with fiber is that it helps to support, support a uh, healthy microbiome. And microbiome can tend to be a bit of a buzzword, um, but all that really means is that fiber is supporting this um, basically colony of healthy bacteria that live in the GI tract in your digestive system. And those bacteria support a lot of bodily functions, like helping you to digest food properly. They help um, support your immune system. So lots of benefits associated with a healthy microbiome. And like I said, fiber is one of the things that helps to feed that and to keep it healthy. So lots of benefits there. I think we're almost done mashing these bananas. They're giving me a run for my money. You kind of just want most of the lumps out. Um, but a few little pieces of banana here or there is kind of nice to run into in a baked good, so we won't worry about it too much. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And from here, we're going to go ahead and add our two eggs. If you only had one egg, that would work as well, but I'm going to use two. Helps kind of have a muffin that sticks together well and rises nicely. So we'll just stir those in. You could use a whisk if you want to, but a fork works just as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add in this uh, quarter cup of canola oil. And you can use any neutral oil. What I mean by neutral oil is just one that doesn't have a strong flavor, won't change the overall taste of your product. Um, and canola oil is a really mild tasting oil. You could also use coconut oil if you wanted to, get that melted and use that. Um, however, coconut oil is pretty high in saturated fat. So if you're trying to avoid saturated fats, you might wanna do um, a vegetable oil or a canola oil like I'm doing um, here. So we'll just mix that all together. Nice, pretty color. All right, so now we're gonna be combining the dry ingredients together. 
Um, today, I'm going to be using a gluten-free all-purpose flour as well as oat flour. And the only reason I'm using gluten-free all-purpose flour is because the recipe is designed to be 100% gluten-free. Now, it's not because gluten-free is somehow healthier than not, but um, for those that have an allergy for gluten um, or have a sensitivity, this is just a really nice recipe to use for that. I'm in that category, so all my recipes are gluten-free. So that's why we're using that today. And then we're going to be combining it with our oat flour here. Um, and the oat flour, I have a cheap and easy hack for that. Don't go out and buy oat flour. If you have a blender at home, just blend your oats. And then um, you're going to want to blend them in like increments of about a cup, maybe two. Blend them until they're a nice like flour, powdery consistency, kind of like I have here. Um, and then you can use it in baked goods or in pancakes, and it can make a really nice high fiber flour. Um, and then if you do have a gluten allergy or sensitivity, just be sure to buy 100% gluten-free, certified gluten-free oats um, to use in your recipe. I'm just gonna break up the flour, make sure that we don't have any big lumps, and then I'm gonna be adding my salt, and this is my baking powder and baking soda and my cinnamon. And we'll just blend those in. The inclusion of oats, I mean, it's a really cheap ingredient. And so using oat flour in baked goods um, is something I really like to do because oats are just something that you probably would find in the pantry and you might not use all that often otherwise. So if you can use them up by blending them and adding them to recipes, um, it's a cheap ingredient and it works really well. All right, so our dry ingredients look nice and combined. I'm just gonna add that vanilla to the wet before I forget. That in, and then we'll add the dry ingredients there. We'll just stir them together. And at this stage, you just wanna pay attention to not over mix the batter. You really just want to stir it in until everything is kind of coated in the flour. And you don't see any huge lumps of the dry ingredients hanging out. Just about like that is perfect. We don't want to go any farther because if you overmix the batter, you'll get a stiffer, flatter muffin. And we don't want that, obviously. So there's the batter. I'm going to divide it into these muffin cups. And then we'll bake it on 350 for about 18 minutes. You might want to check it at about 16 minutes. Um, you want to see them bounce back just slightly. Um, and so after they're done baking, you want to just let them cool for a few minutes. They're best enjoyed warm. Um, but then store them in an airtight container after they're all finished cooling. And those will keep on the counter for a couple of days. Um, but eat them up pretty quickly because they won't stay good for too long after that. Um, and then for the final product, I just want to show everyone, this is what they look like after they're baked. Um, and they really do hold up quite nicely. You can see the flecks of banana in there, and they've got a cracked top, so that's kind of like what they look like after they're done baking. All right, so that's it for this recipe. Um, thanks for watching. Join us next week for Learning Kitchen Live, and the recipe will be posted below the video.